Hi, this is Christopher. I'm a marketer. Thank you so much for joining me today. I love marketing. I think marketing is the strongest concept in business. And I love learning, sharing, and promoting what marketing is. Um, on the right side here, this is my logo. I do have a YouTube channel that I would love for you to check out. Uh, there I talk about marketing, just like a whole bunch. And on the left side is proof that Adobe can make anybody look presentable. That is a joke because I love being silly and life is too short not to be silly. This is actually me. I wanted you to see the person behind this awesome voice. Marketing is found everywhere in business. It's not just about selling, advertising, or branding. Marketing really is a scientific approach to a business objective. Um, and one aspect of marketing, well, digital marketing specifically, is social media management. And we are going to be looking at a platform today called Sprout Social. If you've never used a social media management tool before, I definitely think Sprout Social is a very attractive option to starting this endeavor. Um, I have used Hootsuite before, so there's a little bit of a bias because I am trying hard not to compare the two, but it helps because we want to understand what is it that makes Sprout Social Sprout Social. Um, in the tutorial, I will mention some things. Uh, again, neither platform is bad or good. Uh, it's really about preferences. Um, you know, it's like McDonald's or Burger King. It's just kind of what are you feeling, what works best for you. But there are some differences that I do want to talk about in, in this tutorial. So let's get this underway. So what is social media management? I've never really liked the word management. I mean, I don't, I don't hate it. But uh, if you've ever read the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, the author, Stephen Covey, he states that you manage things, but you lead people. You manage things, but you lead people. Well, social media is all about people, really. And, you know, if you manage things, and we're talking about social media management, and we're talking about a tool called Sprout Social, then all it will ever be is a tool. And you got to remember that these platforms are open to everybody. You know, they're, they're just tools uh, to be used um, in a business's marketing efforts online. And that's fine. But I'm about to post a video about Accor Hotels and how they utilized Hootsuite, which is a tool, in a very clever way to kind of attract different customers to their hotels. And I'm, I'm going to post it, and I hope you guys see what I mean by not viewing social media platforms as a tool, but as a concept of business. Um, and again, so I love replacing the word management with the word business. And a business is an organization with objectives. And this business wants to achieve these objectives through marketing efforts. And they have to be positive. There has to be a gain in achieving these objectives. There has to be more customers, more brand awareness, more revenue, um, because a business is constantly trying to grow, trying to be better than it was before. If you, if you ever worked in sales before, you'll notice that whatever you're selling this year is going to be, you're going to need to sell more next year and so on and so on. And that's just how sales is. So I really love seeing social media business as the utilization of social media in marketing efforts for an organization. So what is Sprout Social exactly? Sprout Social is a social media marketing and optimization platform. There are a lot of things it can do. Uh, this tutorial literally can be a dozen different videos. But for this purpose, because it's kind of an introductory to many of you who have never used it, uh, we're going to focus on five functions that Sprout Social allows a marketer, an organization, or anybody really to do. And that's publishing, engaging, analyzing, monitoring, and listening uh, different various social media concepts. So when you start with Sprout Social, I've already logged on and I've already created my account. Um, but when you start, you'll uh, have to choose from one of these packages. Now, if you've never used Sprout Social before, you do get a free trial for 30 days, which I highly recommend everyone take advantage of. Start it, get familiar with it, uh, just mess around with it, put your own Twitter account on there or Facebook account, and just kind of get a grasp of what it is. And it's a great thing to put on your resume. Um, but, you know, if you're really looking to invest into Sprout Social for business purposes, uh, you, there's three packages to choose from. And every time you move to the next package, you keep your previous features plus the added ones on there. Now, when you first start on this page, when you hover over those underlined features, a little box pops up and it'll tell you what those features are and how to utilize them. Um, we're not going to talk about all of them, but I do want to talk about certain features from each package just because I strongly believe that you need to know is it worth paying 
$50 more to go to the professional? Is it worth paying $100 more going to the advanced? So the features that are really prominent in the standard package, um, you get five social profiles, uh, the max to manage in Sprout Social. Now, everyone might think that it means you get your LinkedIn, you get your Facebook, you get your Instagram, you get your Pinterest, and you get your Twitter. Not necessarily. Um, so let's say your company just has a bunch of different brands or business units, and they're all on Twitter. You can have three Twitter accounts. You can have four Facebook accounts and maybe one Pinterest. Uh, for instance, this is my uh, Twitter. And if you type in Amazon, you'll notice Amazon has Amazon.com, their main homepage. It has an Amazon Prime Video, Amazon Music, Amazon Web Services, Amazon Customer Service for Help, um, Amazon for the UK. So it has multiple Twitter accounts. So Sprout Social allows you to have five social profiles in the standard package to manage, and they can be you know, a mixture of any social media profile. Um, you get an all-in-one social inbox. Now, this is what's interesting. Every communication from each one of your profiles is converged into one all-in-one social inbox. Uh, again, it's all about preferences. Um, some other platforms, you can separate the inbox from Pinterest, from Instagram, from Twitter, from Facebook, but this is an all-in-one, and I'll show you in a second when we open up my uh, platform on Sprout Social. Uh, and again, kind of the meat and potatoes of social media management is, you know, publishing, scheduling, uh, drafting, posting, really, uh, just kind of managing your uh, content and how you send it out through each profile. Um, profile keywords and locations monitoring. We're going to talk about understanding the difference between monitoring and listening because if you know the difference between social listening and social monitoring, you will be able to use a social media management tool very effectively. And again, like many other um, social media tools, you'll have the ability to download Spout Social in an app and analyze and post and do all these great things from your mobile device. Okay, so using the professional package, you keep everything in the standard as far as features go, but you get more um, and some get an upgrade. So for instance, instead of five social profiles, you get to hold 10. So maybe you want to add a customer support system profile, or maybe you want to add a product knowledge profile, or maybe something strictly about uh, brand awareness, or maybe you have a product that's really taking off and you want to dedicate a social profile uh, strictly to that product or service. Um you get competitive reports for Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. That's very useful if you are pushing marketing campaigns through these three uh, these three um, platforms. Uh, as you know, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are very different from one another. Twitter is well known for quick messages. Uh, Facebook is about community and following uh, building. And Instagram is all about imagery and short videos. So again, that's a generalization, but a marketing campaign uh, with the same content works different on each of these three uh, platforms and competitive reports will allow you to see you know where is it working more effectively or maybe where are we not hitting the mark scheduling for optimal t send times um, you know when you are trying to uh, post something you ask yourself when is the best time to do so if I post it at seven in the, m in the morning on Saturday will I get the kind of engagement that I want and you know, in conjunction with the competitive reports, you will see, you know, maybe I'm getting more engagement on Friday at 3 p.m. or maybe it's Sunday at noon or, you know, at different times. It'll, these will kind of give you, this data will give you insight on when the best time is to make an action on your social profiles. Um, you also get paid social reporting for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. These four platforms have a partner program where you can pay them and they will advertise your uh, content at certain times. And you want to know when are those uh, those marketing advertisements uh, working for you and on which platform. So again, as you grow in your business, you know, you have to decide, can these features benefit me if I, you know, upgrade to the next package? Ooh, now the advanced. Now, there are a lot of features on the advanced, and again, I really recommend going through each one of them so you can kind of decide, is it something that is of interest to increasing the value of your marketing efforts? Um, I really found these two. This is one right here. This is really one right here. These two are one. And 
the custom URL tracking to be the prominent decision makers of whether you should upgrade to the advanced. Because again, it's a hundred dollar difference between professional and advanced. So you get chat bots with autom automation tools and saved and suggested replies. Now, <laughs> if you don't know what a chat bot is, um, it is a good and bad thing. And I, not to knock out any company, I'm, I'm not trying to do that, but I want to give you an idea of what a chatbot is. It's this artificial intelligence that when a customer is reaching out or mentioning your brand or company in a social media post, tweet, um, in any content really, a chatbot crawls the social media data and it finds you know keywords about your company and it creates this reply to that uh, initial post from uh, the user, the social media um, customer. So this one, again, not to knock on American Airlines. Uh, we don't knock on companies. We just want to understand them. So maybe one day we work for them or help them. <laughs> so uh, this is a customer. And again, I blocked out this person's name to protect him from any harm that any company might do to him. Uh, he's having an issue. Um, and he's mentioning words like Chicago and Thursday morning and took 11 hours to get me from, you know, destination A to destination B. Now, he's being very specific about this problem. And then American Airlines replies, our crew is working to make up time in the air and we're sorry for the delays you encountered this trip. Now, notice American Airlines, their uh, reply didn't have anything to do with the specific things he's mentioning. And he's even acknowledging on the reply to the reply, bot answer. Now, I'm not saying this is a bot answer. I really don't know. Um, they either have a very maybe not well-trained social media uh, person working with American Airlines Twitter. But as you can see, um, it's not really acknowledging the specifics of this person's um, issues. And, you know, uh, it's really simple, uh, simple to kind of tell the difference. It, let's say, let's go to McDonald's really quickly. Um to, to kind of give you an idea of, you know, what is in the chat box. Um, so here's a perfect one, right? So a person named Dami, I just gave somebody's name. Well, oh, well, Dami, you're famous now. Uh, Damn, a McChicken sounds smack right now. <laughs> and McDonald's replies, we're digging your enthusiasm for our McChicken, Dami. Swing by your faves anytime the craving hits. <laughs> so they're using the person's name. Uh, they're acknowledging that there's this uh, a feeling and emotion. So obviously, I would assume this is not a chat bot. Um, another, this is really fun. We're going to start stop talking about Sprout Social and just do social media concepts. Um, let's go to the Hilton. And as you can see in the tweet and replies, you know, you have these two initials, and they are just that those are actual people, um, you know, talking to customers and saying, you know, sorry, what's going on, or thank you for your business or any kind of interaction. And they're letting them know that uh, people are talking to them. So, you know, that's very important to know about chatbots. You know, it, it, chatbot is uh, this program that replies to certain keywords uh, customers are posting in their social media. And you can get that with uh, the advanced package in Sprout Social. Now, again, I'm kind of showing you the negative aspect of chatbots, um, which there is, but there's also a very positive um, aspect of chatbot, and it comes from the simplicity of what a customer is asking. So I put this down here. Hey, at Starbucks, what time do you close on Labor Day? It's something very common that a lot of customers are maybe curious about hours of operations. So instead of having a social media coordinator or a social media marketer, behind the computer answering maybe a thousand of these because people want to know hey, what Starbucks, what time do you close? A chatbot is useful. So it's definitely something to consider if maybe you have a lot of customers asking kind of basic questions about your business. And you can only know that through social monitoring and social listening. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into the platform. Uh, so again, uh, another prominent feature, in, in my opinion, that determines... Uh, whether or not you should upgrade is the custom URL tracking. So what a custom URL tracking does is you want to know where these customers are coming from. 
So you're sending out all this um, content, these ads, this paid ad, you're posting here and there, and you kind of want to know where are these people coming from? Where is the starting destination and how, what path did they take to get to you? So Sprout Social has this feature where you can create custom URL trackings for your marketing campaigns, for your posts, for your paid advertising that allows you to see where your customers are coming from and that'll give you a better idea of maybe where to focus your efforts okay so after you've decided on which package better suits your organizational goals um you create an account and again i've already created my account i'm just going to walk you through what i saw when i started making my um platform uh, so sprout social platform um, you know, basic information. We've done this plenty of times. If you've ever uh, joined a social network profile or a CRM program, um, they do ask you some basic questions about your organization name, how many people work there. Uh, again, I believe a lot of this is just marketing sales data so that Sprout Social is a company. They want to understand you so that they can better serve you, um, you know, through their features, through their consultants. Um During the initial process of signing up, you are going to be asked to submit your profile. Now, it's very important to realize that in social media management tools, you are allowing their, the programs to view the, the interactions, the information of you and your followers, you and your content uh, that you're posting. Um, so as you are connecting your profiles to this platform, you usually get a... I want to say it's a legal uh, understanding between the platform and you that 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 platform is going to see what you're posting. It's going to uh, allow you to see the transactions between followers, um, the data, the information, everything. So it's very important to realize that you are allowing another company to see the data uh, that you are transferring between uh, people online in your company. And, and again, uh, um, Sprout Social, Hootsuite, a lot of other social media management platforms are very huge. I doubt that any one of them would jeopardize their customers uh, by um, you know, doing anything immoral with this kind of information. But it's important to know that, that you are giving up certain rights about your information via social media management. Um, and then finally, again, another... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say it's surprising. Um, information, they want to know about you. Um, why are you here? Why are you interested in this platform? And again, it's it's better it's for you so they can offer you certain services and consultants. Um, and it's for them so they can understand how to offer you more. Uh, and this is kind of the basic uh, sign up process when going to Sprout Social. We did it, guys. We are on the platform. <laughs> again, I hope all of the talk about principles of social media marketing um, kind of opened your eyes to what these tools really are. I, I'm a firm believer that if you understand the principle first, then you'll understand how these tools can benefit you. A lot of times people, they sign up for these programs and they peruse around and they don't really understand what these tools are here for and, and how they provide value in your marketing efforts. So this is the platform. Um, uh, it's a little bit different when you actually purchase uh, a plan. Um, on the very top, you have your buttons, and each button is an area of publishing, analyzing, monitoring, listening, and engaging with your followers and your on your profiles. Uh, now, this part right here, you know, is hundred percent the monitor profile health, monitor engagement, create a brand keyword. What these are are more tutorials. When you sign up for the 30-day free trial and you click on one of these, let me just show you, it gives you a demo account to analyze. Right? Again, I do not have these many impressions and engagements on my accounts, but these demo accounts are just something to play around with so you can kind of see the difference of, of um, data that is provided to you from your profiles. Um, and again, analyzation of this information comes from you uh, whether it's good or bad um, but these are tutorials within a tutorial um, I want to keep it very simple so you can kind of get the basic basic understanding of how to use this uh, platform again it's a great platform so the first thing to do is we created our we connected our Twitter profile when we signed up so let's say we want to connect another one now I've already connected my Twitter my Pinterest my Instagram let's say I want to connect my LinkedIn now, here's where I'm not a fan, um, just to kind of give you a quick idea. 
Um, on some of these profiles, you can only connect business type profiles. Uh, so my Instagram, I have to switch it to a business type profile to connect it to Sprout Social. I have tried it a couple times and it just doesn't let me and unless I switch it and I really don't want to switch it. So here I'm connecting my LinkedIn, right? Authorized Sprout Social. Again, remember, it's very important to know that you're allowing this third party company to see your information. I'm going to LinkedIn. Here's my information, it's already there. We're gonna sign in. And it should be connected. Now, the way you can double check that is let's go to our inbox. And again, I, I believe it should be a little bit different. Yeah, so I, that's another thing. <sighs> so you need to have a business profile on LinkedIn as well. So LinkedIn and Instagram need to be business profiles. I'm not too sure why. Um, doesn't let me see your your profiles at work are right here but as you can see my instagram is not active it's inactive because it needs to be a business profile i'm not too sure why that is um because i do have linkedin messages um and it should be here too um not to compare to hootsuite but you do not have to have business profiles to connect your pro uh, social profiles to hootsuite um, but again, nevertheless, I, I like using Twitter a lot for uh, these tutorials. So my Twitter is connected. Um, and this right here, this message is right here, that first button, that's your all-in-one inbox. Now, what's so cool about this one that I like about Sprout Social is on the right toolbar, you can see uh, all the interactions from your profiles. So if I want to see just direct messages, here are all the direct messages from my Twitter account. Actually, let me see. I have something else clicked on. Sorry about that. Here are all the direct messages that I have from my followers, from my friends. I'm having a little issue with Apple right now, but my computer. Um, but I can also uh, see my mentions. Who's mentioning me? Who's mentioning my brand in their in their post? In their replies? Who's mentioning? Who's retweeting my things on Twitter? And again, it's different for every profile. Uh, we're just using Twitter to understand it. But this little click uh, button allows you to see the different interactions for a certain spo a cer a social media uh, profile. And on the very bottom, we have brand keywords, which I really like a lot right now, too. Uh, again, I don't really have a specific thing that I'm looking for, but I live in El Paso. And again, again a lot of things are happening in El Paso. So El Paso is one of my brand keywords. Now, when I'm analyzing a brand keyword on this smart inbox, this all-in-one inbox, right, this is called social listening. I'm not necessarily looking at what um, people are talking about interacting with my company. I'm just listening to what they're saying maybe about, maybe about my company, about the industry, maybe about the products and services I perform. This is listening. A, a great way to understand listening and monitoring uh, think of a hall monitor. A hall monitor is monitoring the hall. Okay, it's kind of a reactive approach. Um, they act when something happens. Uh, now, social listening is all about proactivity. You're listening to what's happening in your business, in your industry, in the market, and you're taking that information and you're utilizing it and transforming your marketing efforts to better capture, you know, more followers, more um, engagement, more likes, more retweets. So all I'm doing right here is just listening to what people are saying about El Paso, and I'm trying to, you know, analyze some sort of data of what's going on, you know, and how to that data hopefully will transfer um, to my marketing efforts. A great example of social monitoring is right here. Uh, again, McDonald's, a little bit of an issue. All companies have it. No big deal. You have a customer complaint, and there's some keywords in here called customers uh, about customer service, about horrible is a keyword maybe. Um, Service is another keyword. Now, um, McDonald's is probably ha has a monitoring program uh, to react to these keywords, and therefore they are going to respond to it. That's social monitoring. And again, it's not necessarily uh, bad or good. I mean, it could be praise. It could be uh, concerns. Many different things. So that's the difference between social monitoring and listening. But again, this is the all-in-one inbox. I think it's very user-friendly. I think just a certain a number of clicks, you get to where you want uh, where you want to see the interactions for certain things. Um, but that is the inbox. I really like that feature from Sprout Social. So the next thing we can look at our task. So let's say um, you know I'm doing some social monitoring. 
I'm looking at some uh, messages from potential customers or just uh, people who are in inquiring about my brand. So, you know, right here, um, let's find a good one. Yeah, well, I guess we can use Apple. So see this little pin right here? I click on it, and let's say this message is very important, right? And I need to let my teammates know. Again, when you have more teammates, you can add them on this little plus button on the top next to the uh, connection, the profile connection, you can add more people. You can just send them an invite through their email saying, I want you to join my social media team and have access to this platform. And they'll populate right here. And you leave a comment. So let's say I have a team member named Greg. Say, Greg, need you to follow up uh, uh, with Apple. And let's say it's very important, so I mark it high priority, and I save it and exit. So then I leave for the day, and then Greg comes in the next day in the morning, and he looks at his task, and he says, okay, so what do we got going on right here? Okay, so again, this would be assigned to Greg, and Greg will click on it and says, okay, what's going on here? Uh, my boss said, Greg, need you to follow up with Apple. So Greg is assigned to this task. He is going to uh, interact with app with this message from Apple. Uh, I really like that, especially when you know when you have a large team and you need to, and you have this interaction that someone needs to follow up with, or you need to keep people in the loop. So that that feature of pinning certain interactions is very useful in a social media marketing team aspect. And again, you have your feeds. It's just the general feeds you get normally in your social media profiles. So not necessarily something worth looking into at the moment. Um, you also have publishing. Now that is the meat and potatoes of all of this. And yes, I know I sound very old for saying meat and potatoes. <laughs> but let's take a look at it. Um, so I have already set up some publishing, uh, some posts and some content to be sent out. Um, the overview calendar, if you look, see that little bar right there? It's telling you that something's happening on this day on September 2nd. Um, I have something being sent out on Twitter, and I have a draft pending for Pinterest. Okay, So let's take a look at these really quickly. So I created a little um, Happy Labor Day in my Adobe uh, Illustrator in the little tweet with some hashtags to be sent out on September 2nd at 7 a.m., which is Labor Day. Now, on the same day at 7 a.m., I have the same content being going on on Pinterest. Sorry, let me just go there. And I have to edit it before I send it out. Now, I put it as a draft because maybe I want to change it later on. Um, maybe I want somebody to review it. Once I feel comfortable that it's ready to go out, I can switch it, right? I can ensure that everything is good to go. Let's take a look. Choose the board, uh, my stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of different um, things you need to check off before sending out content. Again, every platform is different. And I'll show you in a second the actual publishing process. But I just want to show you that that publishing tab gives you an overview of what's being sent out. So everything's good to go. It's coming out on the 2nd. It's on Labor Day. It's going to hit at 7 a.m. Let's do it at 8 just so it's a little bit different. And it's scheduled, and that yellow mark will go away. See how the yellow mark has gone away? It just needed to refresh. And now it's being it's officially scheduled to be sent out on Monday, Labor Day at 8 a.m. Okay, so how do you create the content? How do you create the post to be scheduled? Well, that's this button up here in the top right, Compose. So if we click on it, it brings us to the Compose platform. This little drop-down arrow tells you which profiles you can choose to send your content to. Now keep in mind, every profile is different. For instance, Twitter has a character limit that is much shorter than the rest. Uh, Pinterest uses boards, so you might have to choose which board uh, certain imagery is going to go through. Uh, let's keep it simple and let's just use Twitter and let's tweet something. So I have my Twitter selected. And again, just a, a generic uh, post so you guys can see. Happy, happy after Labor Day from my pups. And again, I love using hashtags. I really think everyone should use hashtags because it would make marketing so much easier. 
<laughs> um, minimals. Let's do Labor Day. And let's do Tuesday. Thoughts. Perfect. Um, let me put an image of my adorable puppies. There they are. The left one, the German Shepherd Husky, is mine. And she is an adorable smelly dog. So as it's loading, keep in mind, if I'm not 100% sure that this is ready to be scheduled, I can put it as a draft um, and come back to it later. Uh, maybe I want to change things. Maybe I want to add certain content or new hashtags. Uh, and that just changes it, and it'll appear as a yellow marked box in my calendar. But I think it's ready to go. Uh, so that's my post. Everything's good to go. Now we want to see when it's going to happen. Obviously, it's after Labor Day on Tuesday. And let's do it for about 5.30 p.m. Everybody's getting off work. They might be checking their Twitter. So my content's good. Um, I got my message. I got my info. I know it's going to be after Labor Day. Uh, I'm choosing a time where you know everyone's getting after uh, out of work. I want to schedule it. So let's schedule it. And it should populate right on the 3rd. And there it is right there. See it? So that's how you um, schedule post in uh, Sprout Social with the Compose box. So we talked a little bit about social listening in the all-in-one inbox um, with the brand keywords. Now, keep in mind, the brand keywords is just one word, but it's very useful for hashtags um, because a hashtag can only be one word. Um, but Sprout Social does have a listening tab for social listening. And here, instead of just one word, we can do a phrase or a term or um, a couple of words that are that uh, are relative to each other. Um, I did Popeye's Chick-fil-A, just to give you an idea. Um, if you don't know, um, Popeye's has this incredible, amazing sandwich that makes you feel like you're in heaven because it's just so awesome. And it rivals Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches. Um, so this is social listening. I, I'm typing in a phrase, a popular phrase. And if I worked for Chick-fil-A or Popeye's or even a competitor like Wendy's or... Um, Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, I want to understand what's going on in the industry. What are people talking about that's relative to to my business? And it can be competitor keywords. It can be uh, product keywords. It can be anything that is relative to my business um, in any sense uh, that I can type into the Twitter search, specifically on Twitter because we're using Twitter. And I can kind of look and analyze what people are saying. And with this data, I can hopefully transfer it into a marketing um, effort or strategy. So that is social listening. Okay, and lastly, we are going to look at the reports tab on Sprout Social. So there are a lot of metrics to look at when you are dealing with social media marketing, not management. Um, and it's in a sense, kind of difficult to teach about analytics because, you know, even the best data tools around um, still don't compare to how you see that information. Uh, for instance, let's take a look at sent messages and received messages. Again, I don't have a lot of data to pull from my profiles. So if you sign up for that 30 day trial, you will get a demo account that you can look at and kind of uh, mess around with and, and analyze specifically in the reports tab. So right here, if you're tweeting or sending out DMs on Twitter uh, 520 times within the course of 30 days, and you're receiving 834, well, obviously, you're having a um, uh, more feedback than you are sending out. So what does that mean? Is is that good feedback? Is that bad feedback? What are you doing? You know, is the content um, creating some more dialogue from consumers or users? Uh, Facebook, if you're if you're posting 358 times within the course of 30 days, and you're receiving 73 message, is is it weak content? Is it not making sense? Um, you know, maybe you don't have a lot of people engaged with these posts. So again, deriving that information. From these analytics is solely up to you and it does take a, a you know a, a thing to take a step back and really understand what is this metric all about you know engagement response rate um, the time it takes for you to send a message versus the time it takes to for you to respond to a message um, so again definitely look at the demo account uh, and just kind of go over the reports and you know uh, 
understand what each metric is and see how it's telling you a story about the actions that are happening on your social profiles. Guys, thank you so much for joining me in this introductory tutorial for Sprout Social. My name is Christopher Bustillos. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment and I will be sure to give you the answer. Thanks again and happy marketing.